Hey everyone, it's Friday and I'm in my office and I often re, uh, refer back to our look at previous week's videos so I decided new color. I'd been wearing black for two weeks and I was looking at the stuff in my office. I have some funky little things that you know you might wonder ever wonder what those are. That's a damn it doll and somebody gave it to me so that when you get mad at something you just go damn it, damn it. So you know when you're coding sometimes these things happen. So what do we got on tap for this week? Well, I kind of hinted at it last week, but this week we're going to start looking seriously at Project Zero. And I, from all the feedback that I read from you, which great feedback, was there was two things it's like, oh my God, that sounds overwhelming. And and how how does this categorization thing work? And then how does this bootstrap thing work? So we're going to start on bootstrap and lecture this week. You will have also an assignment with both the hands-on, which we will use the CyberDuck FTP to once we've created a the CDN version, and you'll know this uh, from watching the lectures, and I'll talk a little about it as I show you my output. So you'll create your kind of your template file for your pages that you will use and we'll do more work on this in the coming weeks. So I guess this is hopefully what I'm going to try to do, make you feel a little better. We're going to work towards the Project Zero starting this week. We'll probably finish it in about four weeks from now and then I'll have some other content we'll, content we'll do at the end. But by that time you should have a really good start on this project. Okay, so chillax it's all good right it's all good should be fun now before i get into the material i want to talk to you about something that um i'm kind of you know this is the point of the semester and some of you may have already done this where he's starting to think about next semester and what you're going to take so i just want to give you a little you know fyi so if you're interested which i hope you are in the web developer uh, associate's degree you know, this is 82, right? So then um, 85 uh, and 28 would be two of the next logical steps. And we do put these in a logical order, but we also understand that students may not always be able to do that. And because of our scheduling, it may not always work. But let me say this, next semester, uh, I know uh, Todd, uh, I normally teach, by the way, I normally teach uh, up until the last couple of years. I normally teach CIT 85, which is really HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript and learning, you know, the modern way we build web sites. Uh, but Todd came to me a couple of years ago and he said, hey, I'd really like to level up and bring up his skill and his ability to offer different kinds of classes. And I was like, awesome. And he's done an amazing job for any of you that have set in on any of his classes. And those of you who hadn't, I highly recommend it. So here's the deal. I'm going to set in on in on it myself uh, because it's always good for somebody like me and anybody really who wants to I teach this you may want to do this professionally um, it's the more time on task the more you're going to get this stuff uh, that's why you know I love the lynda.com stuff I love giving you the hands-on and exposure things but it's really focused for me on time on task and he is like that as well so he's going to be teaching it but he's going to be teaching 85 face to face so that next logical class progression from this would be that as well and then 90 would be data driven websites which he's teaching right now and I'm setting in I'm trying to I'm having a little bit of a hard time I'm based on my schedule this week but anyway and so he's teaching this with go right now and then uh, 93 is also happening this semester with Ryan Baker and I'm sitting in on that class too because drum roll for me is that a year from now I'm going to be teaching that and I'm really both excited and a little bit nervous I'm going to be leveling up my skills because I haven't taught JavaScript before I, I've been working with JavaScript through the years but I'm definitely looking forward to leveling up my skill in that so a year from this semester do be doing that and then you'll have Brian also teaches server side uh, and I believe right now he's using Ruby on Rails to do that. Okay, so those are the courses and we really attempted to streamline this associate's degree to give students what we felt was really what they needed and a hopefully a relatively quick path to getting the associate's degree. We are in the process, as we always are, of looking at this and, and figuring out are we really doing what both industry wants the students to have and serving the students for wherever their path leads them and are we offering 
you know, relevant content. So it's a process we're constantly going through and we're doing that right now. All right, so just FYI. So let me go ahead now and talk about this week's work. As I said before, see, see my shirt? <laughs> so modules. So you have finished, are in the process, right, this whole server space, and as of today, only two of you have selected, and I suspect this may be, you know, and of course your reply is not due till Monday, right? So only two of you, which means the next person in, right, you would be three. So how do you know? You look through here. See, you know, Nina took S1, Sarah took S2, and then um, it's really, I think the video should really help you to walk through this really well, okay, and then I have 16. So do follow in sequence. If there's any question, please let me know, all right? Okay, so doo -doo -doo, that's that was that one. So let me go back here. I'm just kind of looking at kind of where we're at. Now this week, what you're going to do is, we, as I mentioned before, we're going to start the bootstrap trainings. We're going to, I believe I have it scheduled for four weeks. Um, we can double check that it might be three, but anyway, right, so as normal, this is the taking notes from the lynda.com, Linda doing it in your Google Drive, which this seems to be almost everyone's gotten this. Okay, so, but I think this should be really also fun because I'm also going to use this as a part of the hands-on assignment. So let's actually go over the current topics and then we'll talk about, because these, you know, sometimes I place them in order I want you to do them, but these can go in either order because they're not related. So project zero category slash menu. So I want you to give some thought to this. Okay, so now... And remember, we talked about that 25 pages, um, you do have to come up with a way to categorize this. And and, there, and because there's so much content, right, you can categorize this, um, these 25 pages, whichever way you want. And I've said in the requirements between four and five item, uh, menu options or categories. So what you're about to do, you're not in this case, and I use this in quote, married to, you don't have to use what you're about to do to in your project zero, but it is a way for you to start thinking about it and is a way for you to start, you know, looking also at how others might think about it. And I was, I was thinking about this kind of as the next logical step. It's like, so I was asking myself, let's say somebody came up with a really nice organization of those categories that you liked, you know, could you use theirs? And I guess my thought would be, you know, I don't know if I'm opposed, I don't know if I'm opposed to that, but I also would ask you, you know, if you do use that, you would then come up with your own pages, your own examples, and we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks of what your pages would look like, but I really ask you to come up with your own unique ones. But I also understand that because this content, you know, has a domain, meaning there's just a certain amount of it, that, you know, there may be some that are similar. Okay, so that's what you're going to do for the hands-on. And so let me show you my, and I just did a couple, but let me show you how you do it. And I think we've done, I know we've done drawings, but in Google Drive, new, go down to more, go down to drawings. Okay. And so, by the way, if, and if you don't know, you can right click on this. Oh, sorry, it's right here. File. Because for this assignment, it should be fine. But when we actually do this for another assignment, right, you can do a custom or for the assignment, you might need more room here. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to tell you that I went to file page setup. And just to show you, right, so he, there's a lot of different shapes you can use even though these are flowcharts and, you know, in computer science and IT, we like people, we have liked in the past people to use flowcharts for a particular meaning, but I, I don't, I'm not going to care about that. You can use how, whatever items you want. You'll see in my example in a minute. Matter of fact, I think I used, did I use frame? No, but that works totally okay, right? So once you click an item, right? So once you click a shape and you select that shape, right? Click and drag. And then you can just move them around, right? You can select them together. Uh, you can type in them to give them text, right? There's a lot of you can do here. So I just want you to know that. So here's here's mine, and I just played with it, right? So I said, okay, here's my main 
page, my index page. And then in that page, we'll talk about later the content that, because this will be the one page you'll write some content in. You may write some content in these other ones, but it will really just be for the purposes of connecting the concepts together. Okay. So I kind of came up, I kind of came up, I came up with these, I, I was just thinking kind of about the whole thing and I'm like, what is it I'd kind of like to maybe review more, think more about. So markup, you know, because there's so many things, versions of markup, tools you use, semantics, really something I'm interested in, and then Sublime, right? So it was one of the tools because there were other tools we talked about. And then I thought about hosting and I'm like, okay, so hosting, there's so, we've talked about Google Drive, we've talked about, and we haven't actually, we have talked about uploading things into GitHub. We haven't talked about GitHub pages, so I will make sure we cover that in the coming weeks if you want to use that for your Project Zero. But then just free hosting, different kinds of hosting. Web dev, web development. You remember that first video that we had just that talked about kind of the field in general, right? And we've talked about this in, in various ways. So like um, I can just, as I was thinking about it, I'm like easily come up with this, you know, at least, you know, five or six items here. And then Git. Git we've covered um, from various perspectives, right? So I like that idea that I think I could come up with enough here. So the key is now, can I actually come up with enough? And these are just thing topics, right? So this is not, uh, this is just you kind of thinking about this. And then I want you to just connect it, right? So connect that with lines so that you can see where that is. And again, so here's the other thing, right? So I want this to kind of be an even distribution across whatever, categories you select. So uh, that's part of this exercise too is to get you thinking about it because I might start in the Git and go hmm not quite enough content there in the overall but there also may be creative ways <laughs> right I could come up with content to flow it in there and what I mean by content would be maybe part of a part of a lecture con uh, concept or a content covered in a lecture you know a hands-on a current topic right so we'll talk again more about the, how the pages will look but that's what you'll want to do so uh, share it with everyone post a link and that's what you will do for that topic okay all right so now for the back to here for the hands-on this week what I want you to do is in the lynda.com lecture and I show this under getting started creating a basic uh, CDN for bootstrap bootstrap 3 training from that that walks you through how to create that page okay and then what I want you to do is I want you to modify the title, the H1 and the P, you know, and then upload it to your space. And then I'll show you, I'll do this now using CyberDuck. And it was really simple. I'd actually never used CyberDuck to upload until today. And it was like, it's almost too simple in a way. So then once you're done, you provide us the link. So what I did first is I went and I created in my um, desktop an 82 folder. And I went ahead and created the CSS and the JavaScript, even though these are not required right now, okay? I went ahead and did this anyway. And then here is my page, right? So this is the page that I coded based on following along with that exercise. All right, so now I want to show you this too as well. So I used Sublime, as, as I think we all probably will. And so here's my, and, and again, in File Explorer, you can do this as well in Windows. But I'm just going to drag this over into here just to show you, right? So when I do that, I double click on here. Here's the page I have. Great. Looks fabulous, right? So this is following along. The CDN means that you don't have to have these things that they're referencing, this CSS file, this jQuery file, this bootstrap file on your local drive, okay? And we may do that later. I, I'm kind of thinking about it and I'm almost thinking we won't need to. We could continue to use this CDN version, although it's really okay. And again, I haven't totally thought through how we'll do that. So, but for this week, that's all you need to do. So now how do I use CyberDuck, right? So I showed you last week how to connect, right? So I open the connection, right? I have this set up and then I just connect. Now, once I connect, I had already done it, and you get this message. And by the way, make sure, let me just say this again, make sure, right, because it defaults into web dev, right, which is a different kind of connection. So make sure you have FTP here. So now once you're here, right, so once you're here, you have this directory, 
Uh, hold on, let's connect. Did I connect or not? <laughs> Looks like it's just reconnecting, so let's hang on a second here. Let me see if there's a message in the background. Hold on. Okay, I'm not sure what happened, but as soon as I went back in and did it, it worked fine. So once you, right, you open your connection, and I already had mine, and then you just connect. And when you connect, as I showed before, right, you just, now last week all you had to do was just connect. So this week we're actually going to upload something. So what's important to know here is that you only upload into the HTTP, T, HTTP docs. So by the way, if you were holding hosting a secure site, this would be HTTPS docs. But if you down arrow here, what you will see is a list of files that are on there, right? And so if you remember as well, and I'm just going to grab mine just so you can see this, right? So I went in, I first did, I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. So this is mine, and I first did an upload earlier just with the standard content that uh, Ray had on his when he went through it. Okay, so that's that's the first thing, but I'm going to show you how to upload now. And these this CSS directory was there as well. But all you and it upload was like almost too simple because uh oh I I actually found out there was multiple ways to do it. And so in the hands-on, uh, sorry for this week as well, what I did is I provided a link to a. Um, Sorry, don't mean to be jumping around so much, so let me slow down. I provided a link to the CyberDuck documentation. Maybe that's what's actually here. It is. So for how to do keyboard shortcuts to do upload, because really upload is most of what you're doing. Okay, so I could either upload that individual file or I could upload the folder as well. But either way, all I have to do on the Mac, right, these are on the Mac side, I believe, and then you go down to Windows, and the options for that are over here. It looks like the same command, though, Alt, uh, Window Up. Okay, so let me go back to CyberDuck. So if I hold my Alt key down, hit my arrow up key, it is going to open up, oh, look at that. It's going to say, hey, what do you want to upload? So then all I have to do is navigate to the location, so I don't want to upload that whole 82 directory. If anything, I'd want to upload this. But for now, I'm just going to upload the index file, right? Because it, right now, like I said, create these other two directories. But right now, they're not needed for what we're doing. And I'm just giving you the experience of uploading. So then I know it's unsecured. I think there actually is a secured. I should check that out. But continue. And then I'll just get, yep, logged in. It's going to say I'm going to overwrite it. And I think I can change some default behavior here. Can I tell it to, yeah. So there is somewhere else I can do that. I'll just hit continue. Cool. So that then, doing those steps, uploaded this modified, uh, that I modified the title, the H1 in the body. So now if I come back to my server, in terms of my URL, then and I hit refresh, I will see those changes that I made. Now you don't have to upload it twice, you only have to upload it once. Provide us the link here, but I wanted to show you, right, and that idea of refreshing, which I know Nina got reminded about, which is something very common, right? So in order for you to get the changes, in order for your browser to go through the HTTP process, the the conversation between your computer, your browser, your client, and the server to get that current content, that's what you have to do. You either have to hit enter after that or just hit refresh to get that current content. So again, that there's multiple ways. Actually, you don't have to do it this way, but let me show you the other way I did find I could do it. And it was kind of fun to do this as well, is I could just grab the file and drop it into the folder. Uh, that worked as well, which was kind of fun. And I'm sure there are other ways to do this as well, but I just wanted to show you the ones that I found. All right, do that, provide the link, and that will get us... Um, I have a template file we can start working on in the next uh, couple of weeks and then um, give us a chance to start thinking about Project Zero. Anyway, sorry for jumping around there at the end a little bit, but hopefully you got what you needed. Otherwise, reach out, right? Reach out and say hey and say, hey, I need a little more information on that, Rio. And I'll say, all right.